Good day fellow investors. My mother is Dutch, my father is Italian, I live in Slovenia, just around that hill. I lived for 30 years in Croatia, I work for Bloomberg in London, I have a Swedish name, but I'm not your Volvo car salesman, even if there is a Sven car company. And I would say that it's hard to get more European than me. So in this video I really want to talk about Europe, whether Europe is the weakest link in the global macro system, and how to navigate it as a European to invest and to protect your wealth over time. Because Europe is a federation and let's go even more into a part of Europe that's part of me. So I lived, I come from here, so Slovenia, Croatia, Italy, and uh, I have seen this federation do really well in the 80s when I was born, houses were built, credit was cheap, money was cheap, everything was great. But then inflation came and I, when I was about six years old, I was already a billionaire. So not Elon Musk, not Palipatia, not this. I was a billionaire when I was six years old, thanks to inflation, of course, but a billion is a billion. So I have seen a lot, I have seen the degradation and I really hope that things remain well so that we don't have these clashes and issues over time. But it is definitely a risk because now everything is good. So you're likely preparing your summer holiday, two, three weeks, the roads are packed, everything is great. But we always have to analyze the risk and reward, put Europe in a position, the euro in a position and then see how best to work that out. So we'll go through my outlook. So if the Fed or ECB, it is the same when it comes to interest rates, we'll have to see about the power of the ECB to raise rates to curb inflation. The risks for the developed world are all there. And then for strategy, always invest in businesses, but we might also diversify from the Euro and actually go short. Let's discuss this and if you like the value what you get, if you like Europe, if you like me from Europe, smash that like button and consider subscribing if you want to get more ideas about how to globally create wealth over time, locally but also globally. So let's start with the European macro situation and Ray Dalio just sent an email with the country power index that gives a good indication okay about the empires out there, about their strength but also about the long-term outlook of things. So this is the comparison and we have empire score of course the strongest is still the US China and then comes Europe and then of course those are all smaller countries later. But if you look at in the details, key drivers of country power score, you can see that Europe is slightly declining on the 18 factors that Ray Dalio is watching there. And of course everything looks strong now. However, the weakness are its people's lower than average work ethic and low self-sufficiency and its relatively poor allocation of labor and capital. So poor allocation of capital, we see what the European Union is doing, building bridges, building everything. Okay, they are helping now, but it's not a great allocation of capital, low self-sufficiency. So we are susceptible to outside shocks and of course we like to enjoy our holidays. And when it comes to the position in financial cycles it's unfavorable and the key here with Ray Dalio that is different than most of the predictions you'll hear from politicians ECB is that the real expected growth over the next 10 years for Europe will be 0.3 per year. That is absolutely nothing. That's practically with a little shock one shock that's a recession for the next 10 years so that's where Europe is and that's something we have to keep in mind when it comes to investing in Europe so let's look a little bit deeper at the reasons why economic growth will be low and what are the risks to it if we look at government debt to GDP ratios of course on average we are just below 100% so that should not be an issue that's all of course, when you look at relative perspectives, then it's not that high, but from an absolute perspective, in my opinion, it is high. Everything is high here, especially with the other details that we'll discuss later. But there are these countries that are not in a great place. So high, high 
that levels and combined with something that is really really incredible. If we look at the high debt levels and the spending of GDP, the governments there spend 15% of their GDP for pension spending. That's really really ridiculous to spend so much money on pensions and then borrow to do that. Because if you look at the deficits, only Denmark will have a positive one in 2021 from this data. Everyone else is spending like there is no tomorrow. Even if everything is going great, they are still spending. And you can see here the debt to GDP. Okay, it's concentrated in these countries. So I do not really agree with Dalio that there isn't inequality. There is a big inequality in Europe between the South and the West. Life quality is still good, but there is a difference in risk and debt. Then further, pensions, which means we are getting older and uh, there is no demographical benefit anymore. There will be a demographical detraction a hit and that will over time push on the economy especially with the high debt levels and high pension funding and the working age population will go from 64 percent now to 56 percent this is 10 percent of the population this is really really huge and especially when, when those workers are burdened with high levels of debt, with low productivity, it's really, really a difficult situation and worse than other countries. We'll see about that later. Plus, when you have debt and everything, when inflation coming from outside, coming as an outside shock, then really things can get really, really ugly because you cannot increase interest rates because everyone goes bankrupt and you cannot curb inflation because it is an outside shock which leads to very very ugly situations and this is the key risk from Europe that it becomes the weakest link between the empires because if you have inflation okay then the central bank should increase interest rates to curb that inflation and to stop the economy from overheating but Okay, the inflation is a global factor now, not a local European factor. So the ECB has to balance that inflation versus economy. The economy is in a bad state, will be in a bad state, as we have seen Ray Dalio saying, no growth for 10 years almost, that's nothing. And then if you increase interest rates, where we had low interest rates for a decade, it means that the outlook is terrible. As we have seen Italy, we mentioned already huge debt to GDP, and over the last years they have borrowed at around 2%, 1-2%. Now that is going higher, and let's say that you need to pay 6% in interest, the interest payments are tripled. And if we look at the Italian that 2% interest rates on 3 trillion is 60 billion, in this case euros, okay, dollars, doesn't matter. 6% interest rate, so a triple in interest rate from 60, you go to 180 billion. The total yearly budget plan for the year is to just spend more. Mr. Draghi is just spending like a dragon, so crazy things going on because if you don't spend these guys get mad and they are the largest voting population and if they get mad at you you lose your job and that's a huge salary if you're a politician in Italy so that's the name of the game and if interest rates go up the interest payments triple this is really insane and Italy expects the economy to grow 4.7 percent out of something but over the next 10 years the fundamentals are no growth but they miraculously politicians expect growth and then even lower debt of course really really crazy you spend more every year and somehow miraculously the debt will go down we'll see about that never happened never will of course no growth ahead from fundamentals but they will have some miracles and then how will the debt go down if the deficits is forecasted to be lower and uh, lower and yes there will be some issues here and they'll push this to pay more money and now things are okay because if you look at the budget debt payments are 85 billion euros but if interest rates over the next five years go to six percent this 85 goes to 240 
which is then more than a third of the total budget, which means Italy goes bankrupt and then we have issues in Europe. So it's a very, very tricky situation. This is just Italy and as an example, but many other countries are in the same pasta pot. So unsustainable, very risky and very dangerous. When you borrow to pay interest, what all these countries are doing that's called the Ponzi scheme. So a Ponzi scheme is an investment fraud that pays existing investors with funds collected from new investors. So exactly what most European countries are doing. Plus, they're all not investing into growth education, they're paying pensions. There is nothing else I have to say here. But there is one answer, the holy grail of modern monetary policy, What's the answer? We print money to oblivion. And that's exactly what the ECB has been doing the last years. Just printing, printing, good times, bad times, print more, good times, still printing, keep interest rates at zero and hope for the best. However, now we have seen the change yesterday or two days ago. We are going to in raise interest rates from zero to 0 0.25 and then maybe even more. And this is really remarkable. Just a day after the ECB says it will a little bit increase interest rates. Of course, the news is the following <laughs> danger bond risk because it is not sustainable. It is a crazy situation. Good morning, people. Zero to 0 0.25 is nothing, is irrelevant. Zero to one, irrelevant. Let's push it to six, seven percent so that those savers that have euros are not losing purchasing power because inflation is at nine, ten percent. That would be something. But that, then of course, 70 percent of governments, businesses would go bust. And okay, we see here the expectations for the rate policy. So pushing maybe 1%, 2%, that's still very, very stimulative, especially when you have inflation at 9%. Government spreads are increasing a little bit compared to Germany. When these governments get into trouble is when this goes higher, if the ECB doesn't intervene. Maybe higher coin tosses, but you never know. We'll see on the impact and what these delusional people decide. But as Christine says in her last blog, that they will see how it goes and what happens. But she says it that a large share of the inflation is imported from outside the euro area. So this reduces the total income of the economy and therefore it is really a tricky situation. As she says, any increase in rates for now doesn't constitute a tightening of monetary policy. Rather, leaving policy rates unchanged in this environment would constitute an easing. So we are still stimulating, we are still keeping things easy. And then of course, Normalization has to be carefully calibrated and the goal is to deliver 2% inflation over the medium term. And this is very interesting. 2% inflation here maybe for a few years was close to 2% but usually it's either up or down. It's never on their target. It's impossible. Why they don't give up on that? That is my question. Nevertheless, maybe inflation will slow down as the ECB sees, of course, you never know, they don't know, but they have to make a projection to look smart. But printing money makes good times. As I said, we are all thinking about our holidays and already last week with you Germans having your holidays, everything, the road here, everything was packed, the restaurants, I didn't find the parking. It was insane. And Europeans plan to vacation and fly at record levels this time. So times are really good on free money. And that's the issue. If we have exter external shocks, inflation, stagflation, loss of real purchasing power that is not yet felt because of the accumulation of the pandemic printing, but next year it might be felt, interest rates going up, Italy under pressure, other countries under pressure, businesses under pressure, I don't know. No, the, key, the thing is that nobody knows where it will go. The only thing we know is that there is a huge risk. That's it. When it will happen, how it will happen, how will the ECB, Fed, everybody react? It is impossible to predict and no. The only thing we can know, there is a risk. So as the main European mantra is, let's go on holidays while we still can. That's it. That's Europe.
it's the true and tell me in the comments if it isn't and then again for the prospects of europe as ray dalio says falling slowly that's about it and the outlook is nobody knows but we have seen huge surges in unemployment less spending then money printing hand over fist that yes lowered unemployment but this is the gray lies unemployment but not really huge and wage growth is not covering for inflation which means that there is demand destruction and purchasing power destruction that's a uh, given and if there is more inflation especially outside inflation that could be the game changer because europe is already looking bad if we look at the growth rates so starting 2006 100 now we are at 115 that's 15 percent in 15 16 years that's less than one percent growth per year the US is significantly better, so double the growth rate there. UK a little bit better and China is of course off the charts because it is here from the starting 100. So really Europe already the weakest link here. So that is something we have to take as a given. And now we come to investing and outlooks and possible situations. The first fundamental is that if you are from Europe, you are already so long Europe. Your pension, your real estate, your business, your salary, your whatever, you are long Europe. So you are very long Europe. Then you might start thinking, okay, if there is risk, I might start to diversify away or go short Europe just to diversify, especially if you have the same or even better returns elsewhere. So you already depend on these governments paying you your pension or if on these pension funds here getting a good return and they invest 40% in uh, European bonds. So that's always a risk. So really, really you have to see how long Europe you are and then put that into perspective. Because if your pension fund invests here with 9% inflation, and gets what's now for Germany 0.75 that's ridiculous it means it destroys 10% of your value on a yearly basis that's really insane and you're long this whatever you think about it and then discussing investments in Europe I made this video analyzing the first 20 of the euro stocks index and everything was so expensive because of zero interest rates and those pension funds just accumulating no matter the price. Four years ago I made this video about staying away from the euro and with ups and downs the long term trend is pretty pretty clear on what's going on but you never know this there are always these situations bad times good times bad times good times but the trend now is down down and down and the fundamentals say that it will go even lower so with the weaker currency again diversification globally already being long the currency in so many ways might also be interesting plus then investing in other opportunities huge growth in china huge growth in india comparing to the us so real growth is 100 basis points higher projected than in europe for the us Real growth in China, four percentage points higher. Education great there. So different, different situations than Europe. So when it comes to investing, of course, the key is there is risk everywhere in the US, in China, in Europe. But tailwinds are tailwinds when it comes to investing and headwinds are headwinds over the long term. That's a given. But as we are already long, I always tell people, and I have been telling people for the last five years on this YouTube channel, there is always the possibility to go short. And the best way to go short, 30 year fixed mortgage, and uh, the interest rates are still ridiculous. So if you take a 30 year fixed mortgage and inflation is around 7%, they are paying you 4% in real returns to take money. So you can go short by taking a loan. That's an option. Now, that's an option, investing. What are my actions? Well, let me first say that first and foremost comes investing in businesses and ninth comes investing in macro. The guy that just made 20 minutes about macro. But it's good to know about an 
about the situation and I always know that you love hearing about the situation. But when it comes to investing, first and foremost, businesses, macro, irrelevant if you know what you're doing when it comes to investing. So learn about investing, find your ways, manage the risk and reward and you have nothing to worry about macro. But of course, I'm a global investor, I go where the value is, uh, 20% of my portfolio is in a European company, it's doing well and it takes advantage of what's going on in Europe, so that's also okay for me. So there is always these businesses that will do good, the more you know about them, better. But globally, elsewhere, because of zero interest rates in Europe, weak euro, etc. Globally, things are much cheaper. And if the euro weakens, you are diversified, and that's again a tailwind. So if you find the same business in Europe and somewhere else, same, same, same risk and reward, I would prefer to own the business somewhere else just because of the macro tailwind. Europe is Europe, but the quality of life globally looks like the, to be the best in Europe. We really enjoy our holidays. We really enjoy our slacking at work four weeks there will be nobody in Italy the next four weeks when Ferragosto starts so good life so that's something I really hope will continue forever and especially if we invest smartly with our personal finances it will continue at least for us that's the goal there and you can see how these negative headwinds work over time this is the Dutch stock market index that did nothing over 22 years nothing so high valuations i don't like it so uh, this is something you have to think about when it comes to investing and you're probably already long a lot of it so to summarize you're already long europe a lot if you are from europe if you are not from europe you don't care about europe then the macro doesn't really matter it comes ninth focus on businesses, but if you can focus on better businesses outside, even better, and then don't forget to go short if you can. However, keep in mind the quality of life is going up despite the sluggish numbers. 1% growth for 15 years, but quality of life has improved dramatically. So even if it is zero over the next 10 years, if no shenanigans happen, quality of life should even improve more, and that's a positive. So I want to really give it a positive note to everything. And yes, there are these risks, but we can have a strategy to diversify from the euro and go short, and the strategy is always invest and own businesses. There is no answer to that, nothing beats that. So, thank you for watching, I hope you remain positive and just look at value across the globe, diversify as much as you can, go short if you can get your money for free i'll make a video about real estate in a few weeks so also something to think about thanks for watching smash that like button and i'll see you in the next video